Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to go over five worked examples covering problems on the inclined plane. Now remember, this just means mass or object on a slope, and if you haven't done so already, check out my previous video covering the theory on this topic, as that way you'll be able to apply what you learned in that video to this one. So let's get started. Question 1 says that a 5 kilogram block sits on a slope, as shown below. For the block, calculate the component of weight parallel to the slope. So you'll see we've got an angle of 40 degrees there for the slope, and the mass of 5 kilograms sits on the slope. So we're asked to calculate the component of weight parallel to the slope. So that would be the component of weight down here. So we're going to write down what we know from the question. So we're trying to find the component of weight parallel to the slope. I'm going to call this W for now. We know the mass is 5 kilograms. We know that G is 9.8 newtons per kilogram on Earth. And we know that the angle theta is 40 degrees. So we then write down the equation for the component of weight parallel to the slope, which is going to have sine in it. So we've got W equals mg sine theta. Substituting in the numbers, we get 5 times 9.8 times sine of 40. And if you put that into your calculator, you should get an answer of 31.5 newtons. Question 2 says that a 2 kilogram trolley is placed on a 30 degree frictionless slope as shown. The force of gravity acting on the trolley is 19.6 newtons, but only a component of this force parallel to the slope, Fp, causes the trolley to accelerate. Part A says to calculate the size of the force, Fp. So again, just like in question one, we want to find the component of weight parallel to the slope. So if we write down what we know from the question, we're trying to find Fp. We know that the mass is two kilograms. We know that G on Earth is 9.8 newtons per kilogram. And we know that the angle theta is 30 degrees. So writing down our equation, we have, so instead of W this time, we're using Fp. So we have Fp equals mg sine theta. Substituting in the numbers, we get 2 times 9.8 times sine 30, which when you put into your calculator, should give an answer of 9.8 newtons. Now we could have done this a bit quicker here because they gave us the weight downwards on the trolley which is actually mg so we could have actually gone straight to writing that as 19.6 because we knew what the mg value was. Part B says assuming friction is negligible, calculate the acceleration of the trolley. Well writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find the acceleration A. The force F acting parallel to the slope is 9.8 newtons and our mass is 2 kilograms. So writing down Newton's second law, we get F equals ma. Rearranging for a, we get a equals f over m. And substituting in the numbers, we get 9.8 divided by 2, which gives an answer of 4.9 meters per second squared. Now, just to point out that sometimes the question will give you a frictional force as well. So in that case, we would have had to find the horizontal component parallel to the slope, which was 9.8, and subtract the frictional force from it. But in this case, we were assuming friction is negligible, so it made it a bit easier for us. Question 3 says to find the acceleration of the 8 kilogram block down the slope if the frictional force acting on it is 10 newtons. So the 10 newtons is not drawn in the diagram but it's told in the question. And you'll see that the slope makes an angle of 20 degrees with the horizontal. So first we need to find the component of weight acting down the slope, parallel to the slope. So writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find the component of the weight parallel to the slope, we'll call this W. We know that the mass is 8 kilograms. We know that G on Earth is 9.8 newtons per kilogram and the angle theta here is 20 degrees. So writing down our equation, we get W equals mg sine theta. Substituting in the numbers, we get 8 times 9.8 times sine of 20. Putting that into your calculator should give an answer of 26.8 newtons. So we can then sketch that component of the weight on our diagram. So there it is there, and that's our 26.8 newtons. We're also told in the question that there's a frictional force of 10 newtons, so we can draw that acting back up the slope, because that's going to act in the opposite direction to the motion, and label it 10 newtons. So now what we need to do to find the acceleration, we've got two forces. So we want to find the unbalanced force causing the block to move down the slope in the first place. And then we can work out the acceleration. So now determine the unbalanced force F. We've got F equals 26.8 minus 10, which gives us 16.8 newtons. So then finally, we can calculate the acceleration. So writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find A. We know that F is now 16.8 newtons down the slope and the mass is 8 kilograms. So writing down our equation, we have F equals MA. Rearranging for A as always, we get A equals F over M. And putting in our numbers, we get 16.8 divided by 8, which equals 2.1 meters per second squared. Question 4 says that a car mechanic puts a car onto a ramp. The angle of the slope is increased until the car just remains at rest. Calculate the force of friction between the slope and the car. 
and in the diagram here our car is 1000 kilograms, our frictional force will act back up the slope against the direction of motion, our component of weight parallel to the slope will be down the way here, and our maximum angle to hold the car is 25 degrees. So this is when it just remains at rest. So that means that if we go above 25 degrees to say 26 degrees, then the car will start moving down the way. The first thing we need to realize is that since the car is at rest, the component of weight down the slope will equal the frictional force up the slope, i.e. balanced forces. So we're gonna have balanced forces at rest. So that means to calculate the force of friction between the slope and the car, we can calculate the component of weight down the slope. So we're gonna call the frictional force F friction, we know that the mass is 1000 kilograms. We know that the gravitational field strength is 9.8 newtons per kilogram. We know that the angle theta is 25 degrees. So writing down our equation this time, instead of using W, we're gonna use F friction. So we've got F friction equals mg sine theta. Putting in the numbers now, we get 1000 times 9.8 times sine of 25. And putting that into your calculator should give an answer of 4142 newtons. Question five says that a box of 40 kilograms is placed on a slope. A constant force of friction of 200 newtons acts on the box. Calculate the minimum angle of the slope that would be required for the box to slide down the slope. So from the picture, you'll see our 40 kilogram block with our frictional force of 200 newtons acting back up the slope. And we want to know the smallest angle that will cause this block to start moving down the way. We saw in question four there that there will be an angle at which the frictional force balances the component of the weight down the slope, but we want to find the angle just above that, which causes the block to start moving down the slope. So first of all, the box will slide down the slope when the component of the weight down the slope is greater than the frictional force. So when this force acting down the way is greater than the force back up the way, it's going to move back down the way and that hopefully makes sense. So we can write this in terms of our expressions in physics. So that is when mg sine theta is greater than 200 because we know that the frictional force is 200 up that way and we know that this component is going to be mg sine theta as an expression. So we want to find the minimum angle theta. So we can write down some of the stuff that we know from the question. So we're trying to find the minimum angle theta. We know the mass is 40 kilograms and our G value is 9.8 newtons per kilogram. We've got mg sine theta is greater than 200. Substituting in the numbers now, we get 40 times 9.8 times sine theta is greater than 200. And remember from mass that if you're using the greater than symbol or less than symbol, the rules of multiplication and division and so on are the same. So this is our left hand side, this is our right hand side. If we want sine theta on its own, we need to divide both sides of this by 40 times 9.8. So if we do that, we get sine theta is greater than 0.51. And if we then want theta on its own here, we need to take the inverse sine of the right hand side, i.e. select shift sine on your calculator, and we end up with theta is greater than 30.7 degrees. So what we're saying here is that when the angle is greater than 30.7 degrees, then the box will start moving down the slope. So that means the minimum angle must be 30.7 degrees. That's all for this video folks, I hope you found it useful, if you did give it a like, subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.